What's up guys, welcome back. Now we got a little bit late start this weekend. Yesterday I did a little bit of moving so it kind of kept me until late. I did get a little bit done in that afternoon, evening, but the light wasn't very good so I didn't film much. But let me show you what we did and where we're at. So I have the hood up right now because I was doing some wiring, but you'll notice I now have a little fog light light bar. Now I'm wanting to point this kind of downward, actually use this as fog lights. Whenever it snows and stuff here, it can get pretty hard to see. And I did notice before having some low pointed amber fog lights actually helped a lot more cutting through that snow than just some white fog lights. So we went with the little amber light there. We also went ahead and tucked the wires up for the back tail lights and everything up in those boxes. Those are good to go. Now I didn't show this last episode, but these are our little tailgate holders. This is like an abrasive resistant nylon kind of covering or whatever. So that'll help us and we'll get it slipped in there. Right now I just have some bolts in there holding up the tailgate. So we'll get those removed and slip this in place and we'll be kind of back to normal on that. So on the doghouse cover, I got some of our stuff riveted back in place on there. Got the little Zeus fasteners back in and our little side latches as well. But one thing I still need to do inside there is to go ahead and rivet these back in place also. This is for that front part of our doghouse cover. So I need to find the holes where they came out because we kind of painted over the top of them and the dog is running wild through here. So I'll use a little pick or whatever to find the holes where these used to go. Make sure it's clear, go ahead and rivet them back in place and then we should be good on the doghouse cover to go ahead and put it back in. So I went ahead and moved it out here, actually cleaning it up a little bit. It is quite windy. But the wind kind of helps because it was a little dusty, so it's kind of helping blow all the dust off of this thing. I still have the passenger seat out because I do disconnect the batteries every once in a while, just so if there is a slight drain, it's not draining the batteries. Of course, I will find that out later, so eventually I'm just going to have to connect them and leave them connected. We went ahead and put on our temporary mirrors. Now, I haven't quite gotten inside and had somebody adjust them yet while I am sitting in there, so I will end up having to do that. Actually, I may do that now. We got the doghouse cover all finished up here, the latches on, everything, so now we can actually get this all latched down. It'll be a lot quieter in here and cooler, I hope. We also got all the wires underneath the dash tucked up as much as I can. Now, I probably could clean them up a little bit more, but right now they're up out of the way. I will find a little bit better way of actually kind of cleaning that up under there. I still have our little OBD2 just sitting there because I haven't figured out where I really want to mount this thing yet. Eh, we'll figure it out later. We went ahead and finished up our fire hydrant holder under here. Fire hydrant. We went ahead and finished up our fire extinguisher holder under here. So that's back installed just in case. Hopefully we never have to use that thing, but it's there. I also ended up having to get a new horn. The old horn was 24 volt and well, when you push that button, it just barely would squeak. So we went ahead and put a 12 volt horn in there. I went ahead and got the low tone. That way it kind of matches the tone of maybe a truck instead of a car. Just a little advice if you're looking at horns. Well, after multiple days of searching, we finally have insurance on this thing. So that means tomorrow, we get to go get this thing inspected and that probably just blinded y'all but of course it's a weekend so registration i'm gonna have to figure out if we can do it online if not it's gonna have to wait till this coming week so again still no fully driving it on the street also before i get to driving this too far or anything we will get into correcting this camber. As you can see, we do have a little bit of camber in here that we need to correct, which will just take some time, but we basically need to take shims off the top here, which will basically suck that top in a little bit more, which will help kind of fix our camber. And then we should be pretty well in line straight up and down.
Well, there we go. She is inspected now and, well, roadworthy. Now, I still have to get the registration done before I can kind of really drive her around too much. But let me go over kind of what happened whenever I went to get the inspection done the first time. Well, the first time I took it to get inspected, it did not pass. So they came back here to check the uh, turn signals, brake lights, everything like that. I was having an issue with apparently the brake light was not releasing whenever I would release the brake. It just remained on all the time. So it didn't pass that way. So I came back home and let me show you what I did. So whenever I got back home, I was checking stuff underneath here, trying to figure out why that light wasn't releasing the little switch up in there. And it seemed like it just didn't have the right position for that release. So what I ended up doing, since I couldn't shorten that little rod that's on there, I actually put shims on the back side of that sensor which actually brought it down on this side, kind of rotated that down a little bit. That actually gave us just the perfect braking point for that indicator. And after that, now the brake lights work just fine. And then second time around, I go to get it inspected and I was waiting for a car in front of me to get an oil change. So I was sitting there for a while, ended up figuring out that I forgot to put the odometer reading in our little monitor. Now in our little edge monitor here, there is actually a maintenance section in there that you can go into and it'll keep track of your odometer reading and you can actually input what it is currently. So I went ahead, input what the Humvee had originally on there because that's what all the paperwork's going to show. That's how much miles that are on the body, kind of that stuff. So you can go into the maintenance section of it and just pretty much input it, it's pretty easy. So once I came back and fixed that, third time was the charm, took it in, Pass inspection just fine. So on the way back, I wanted to kind of test it just a little bit, see how much more kind of power that engine's getting out of it now. So I did about a three quarter throttle test at maybe rolling at 15 and oh my gosh, that thing will definitely scare you. It takes a second for the turbo to kind of kick in, but once it does, it takes off like a rocket now. Definitely not like before with the old engine. Now I just need to get it registered so I can drive it on the road more and test out everything, make sure everything's good to go. Then hopefully I can take some trips to see some family members that have been kind of following the build. Well, because of the other day, I don't feel like I quite got enough video of me actually driving this thing. We'll go ahead and take it out this evening. Now this is like one, two days before I'm going to try to edit this video to get out to y'all. Yeah, it's just taking a lot of time getting the registration everything done on it, getting it driving. And well, the doors are in the shop, so I don't really have anything to do on the doors until I get them back. Anyway, let's get this thing pulled out of the shop and take it for a drive. I mean, come on, can you blame me for trying to come up with a reason to drive the thing? All right, we got her started up and moved out here. I'm gonna let her warm up some before I take her for a drive. Don't know if it's true or not on diesels because I've never really had one for that long, but I've always heard you kind of want to let them warm up first. Where are you going? Well, GoPro batteries are out right now, so I guess we're just gonna have to handle it with this camera until we get some of the GoPro batteries charged back up, then we can slap them on around the Humvee. We'll go for a ride in the uh, next episode. I don't know.
seems to be working right. Not to jinx myself, but... Check this out. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope y'all enjoyed it, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see y'all next time.